Welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. You know, there are a lot of first time tractor owners out there or people who are considering buying a compact tractor for the first time and really don't know the first thing about tractors and that's okay. So today I thought I would talk about some tractor basics and tailor it for you, the person who really has no experience whatsoever. So stay tuned for that. And if you are experienced, I invite you to watch along and let me know in the comments anything that I may have missed or forgotten and something that you can add that would help the viewers out there. So let's start out with this Kubota B2601 compact tractor. This is my tractor, I've had it for a couple years, and this video is not specific to this compact tractor. This is more about Compact General's... What did you say? Compact tractors in general. You did it! So I'm gonna use my Kubota B2601 as a model today, and uh, you'll see that the features and the functions of this tractor are pretty much the same with any manufacturer. There are subtle differences here and there, but for the most part, uh, things are in the same place, they work the same way, they're just minor differences. So this is gonna help you quite a bit. And we'll start at the back, we'll work our way around, and we'll do a little, well, walk around. So stick around, and let's start at the back. Hey, quick disclaimer, if you think that I'm some sort of tractor expert, well, you are sadly mistaken. I am just a guy who has a tractor and also has a YouTube channel, and I thought I could share some helpful things with you today. So, take all this with a grain of salt, as they say, and uh, learn from it what you can, and then do your own research, because ultimately, it's up to you to be safe and informed. Anyway, let's look at the back of the tractor. So this is the three-point hitch. Every tractor has a three-point hitch, and what this three-point hitch does, this is the fundamental, uh, I don't know what you call it. This is the fundamental concept or uh, piece of equipment on a tractor. Tractors dating back 50, maybe 100 years now, have had a three-point hitch, probably not 100 years. But anyway, tractors have a three-point hitch, and this is what makes your tractor so universal because you can hook different attachments and implements to this, and all it really does is it goes up and down. But it has these three points of connection. You've got two on the bottom, and then this top link on the top, and you hook that to your you hook that to your attachments and via those three points why it's called the three point hitch and uh, it's relatively universal nowadays they're starting to make uh, different implements with a standard width so that you can use an optional quick attach which is really nice to have a quick hitch so that you can back up and hook up your implements a lot easier with this three point hitch you have so many options to hook up scraper blades, box blades, land planes, mowers, rear snow blowers, so many different things you can hook to the back of this tractor. And that's what makes it so universal. Now also back here, you're gonna find the PTO or the power takeoff. And what that is, is a shaft that sticks out the back of the transmission and that shaft spins and that's what you hook attachments to. Hi Hachiko, how you doing buddy? Uh, that's what you hook attachments to that have gearboxes like uh, a rear mower, a finish mower, or a uh, rotary mower, a rototiller, a wood chipper. Uh, these are all things that I have, but they're all driven by that power takeoff. So that's part of the rear section of the tractor, the three-point hitch and the power takeoff. And let's talk about how this three-point hitch works just a little bit, super simple. When you're seated here at the tractor, you have controls to your right and controls to your left. And this again is relatively standard on most tractors. The controls on your right control that three-point hitch. Very simply, you have a lever and you raise it up to raise the three-point hitch up. You push it down to lower the three-point hitch. Now, mine has another control here and that engages the four-wheel drive. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I like that bucket. That is a nice bucket. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. The one thing that's most common with a front-end loader is a bucket. You'll always see a front-end loader with a bucket on it. And there are a couple of options with your bucket. Now, uh, certain manufacturers have proprietary connections for their buckets. Like John Deere has a, a proprietary uh, quick connect system that works really well, but it's, it's made specifically for John Deere. This Kubota has an SSQA or a skid steer quick attach. And that is a standard term. A lot of tractors use that SSQA attachment. And what's nice about that is it's a lot easier to find aftermarket third-party uh, 
connections or accessories or attachments for the front. Now you don't have to get the SSQA, in fact it's an option, but whatever you do, if you can, get the skid steer quick attach. Don't get a pin-on bucket because pin-on buckets limit you to the bucket you have or you have to buy an attachment that's also made for pin-on and it's, it's just really inconvenient. In fact, take a lesson from our friend Adam over on Hacksman who bought a tractor, it was a, a used tractor so he didn't have the option uh, and he bought it with a pin-on bucket and really, really regretted it. But there's one thing about it that I've grown to hate and it was a huge mistake that I made whenever I purchased this tractor. It has the pinned on bucket. And if all you ever want to do is use the bucket on your front loader, that's totally fine. But you probably will want to put attachments on there like I have been wanting to. Now what the SSQA is going to do for you is it's going to open so many opportunities because you can easily pop that bucket off, put on a set of pallet forks or a grapple. And even if you think you're not going to use those, you probably will. The other thing is it's going to help your resale value if you ever do sell your tractor. If you don't have that uh, skid steer quick attach, it's going to devalue your tractor because everybody wants that. So just get one and don't look back. Now a front end loader has, uh, I guess we would say two axes, two operations, two functions, and that is up and down or tilt and curl. And your stick, your control lever, you have one axis that is forward and back and what that does is it raises or lowers the front end loader frame. And then you can move your stick to the right or to the left on that axis. And what that does is it curls your bucket back or it dumps your bucket out. Now, if you wanna add something like a grapple, for instance, a grapple, if you've seen, they have a claw and they open and close. Well, those work mostly from hydraulics. You can get, I think, some mechanical or electric ones, but most of what you see are hydraulically driven. So what you need is a third set of cylinders to operate that grapple. With that, you need a third function valve to either be installed by your dealer, or if you're mechanically inclined, you can do it yourself. What that does is it takes that hydraulic fluid and it sends it to that third set of cylinders and gives you that, well, third function. Super, super handy. Now let's take a look at the controls on the left side of the operator station. This particular tractor has two sets of controls. One is the range selector for the transmission and the other is the PTO engagement. Now on the range selector, this tractor has low, medium, neutral, and high. Some tractors just have low and high, don't have those three ranges. That's okay, it all depends on the manufacturer. And the PTO engagement is simply on or off. You just push the lever forward to engage the PTO, pull it back, to turn it off. That PTO engagement may be found in different places on different machines. Now most subcompact and compact tractors sold today are going to have a hydrostatic transmission. Basically that's like an automatic transmission in your car. Instead of having a clutch with gears, you have a simple forward and reverse pedal that you push to move the tractor. Kubota uses a treadle pedal system. There's a big, I don't know if it's a big controversy, but it's always an argument about treadle pedal versus the dual pedal system. And John Deere and many other manufacturers, probably almost all of them, use the dual pedals where Kubota uses this treadle pedal. And the way that works is you press the front of the pedal forward to go forward, and you press down on the back of the pedal to go backward. It's one single pedal. The other manufacturers have two pedals, one that goes forward, one that goes backward. They're both fine, they work great, and you'll get used to whichever one you have. Now on the left side are your brakes. And you'll notice there are two pedals here. And that goes back to the old days of tractors when they had brakes on each side. And they've kept with that with newer tractors. Now, I have to say, I don't ever use that. But what that is, is you can, you can make the two pedals work independently. So if you wanna make a really sharp left turn, you can turn your wheel to the left, hit that left brake and help spin the tractor around. I think it was used for people when they're plowing fields or things like that, if they wanna make a tight turn. So otherwise they're ganged together and you just have a set of brakes. Now keep in mind, tractors do not have front brakes. They have rear brakes only and that's really an important safety factor. And maybe we'll talk about that some other time. I mentioned it in some of my other videos, but uh, keep in mind only rear brakes on a tractor, no front brakes. There are a couple things on the floor panel that I think you're going to find on most tractors. One of them is this knob here and this knob turns 
right and left, and that controls the speed of that three-point hitch back there in raising it and lowering it. So if you have heavier attachments, you might tighten that up so it doesn't drop so quickly. And if you have lighter attachments, you might loosen it up. But that's your speed control for that lowering of the uh, three-point hitch. Also here under my left foot, there's this bar. See how I step down on that? Well, what that does is it locks your two wheels together in the rear. You have a, a rear differential like most vehicles do, and each wheel spins independently. But if you start to get stuck or you want extra traction, you can step on that and it locks your axle together so both wheels pull equally. Very handy to use in a muddy situation. But make sure you don't step on that while your wheels are moving. You want to step on it and then move because there are gears inside. And if you step on it while one wheel's spinning and the other wheel's not spinning, you could break a gear internally. Let's check under the hood. Hey, <clears throat> another thing that all modern subcompact and compact tractors have in common is uh, the engines get hot. No, okay. They do get hot. But the thing they have in common, uh, they use diesel technology. They don't use gas engines and tractors anymore that I'm aware of. I've never seen one in a modern tractor. So they use these little diesel engines. And those little diesel engines are powerful and efficient and they sound awesome. But diesel engines are different than gasoline engines and there are a few things you need to know about that. First of all, you've got to buy diesel fuel. Don't ever put gasoline in your diesel tractor. Seems like a no-brainer, but it's important to know. And when you go and buy fuel for your diesel tractor, pick up some yellow gas cans. Or well, they're not gas cans, are they? No, they're not gas cans, they're diesel cans. So pick up some yellow containers because Industry standard is that yellow containers are used for diesel fuel. Red containers are used for gasoline. Blue containers are used for kerosene or water, I guess. That's weird. No, maybe white's for water. Anyway, yellow for diesel. Pick up some diesel containers that are yellow in color. Now, diesels also don't like cold weather. Gasoline engines start much better in cold weather. So there's something called glow plugs in your diesel engine, and you need to know how they work. I'm going rogue here with my action cam so you can see what I'm seeing. Now on the dash, when I turn the key on in the first position, you can see the lights on the dashboard light up. When I turn the key slightly to the right, see that extra light that lights up there? Well, that's the glow plugs. Now, some tractors, as you hold the key in place, that light will turn off when the glow plugs have fully heated up. This one, however, does not. So you read the book and it says, Turn the key to the right for three to five seconds, whatever it is, depending on the temperature. You hold that, and that is warming up the fuel before it goes into the injectors. After a few seconds, you can turn the key and start it up just like a car. I love that engine. Another thing to note is that most, if not all, compact tractors and subcompact tractors sold today have four-wheel drive. And four-wheel drive gives you so much more traction and versatility with your tractor. But you don't want to engage your four-wheel drive unless you actually need it. Because when you engage that four-wheel drive, you have all four wheels that, are, that have power under them. And when you try to turn with your tractor, those wheels are going to fight with each other and they're going to tear up your grass or your dirt. So four-wheel drive is really only used when you absolutely need it. It will also wear your tires down more if you leave it in four-wheel drive. So only use four-wheel drive when you need it. Now these were just the basic fundamentals of a compact tractor. So tell me what I missed. What more would you like to know? Leave it in the comments below. I'll answer if I can and you'll find lots of people who are willing to give their opinion, good and bad, as well. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're a new subscriber, I welcome you. If you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to join us. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.